No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. You don't do a lot of things right. So, Mark Andes, you obviously have quite the pedigree, uh, but what got you into this, what, into music, and, and why a bass guitar? Why not, you know, lead or vocals or, you know, whatever? How did you... But well, that's a good question, and I, I think part of my story is uh, my dad was was an actor and and uh, we grew up in the LA area the San Fernando Valley and there was al always creative people in and out of the uh, we had lived in a small ranch out the, in the west end of the valley <clears throat> and um, Roy Rogers and Dale were neighbors and I went to military school with uh, Sandy and Dusty Rogers. Is that right? Yeah. And <clears throat> Hang on, let's get back to this military school thing. Was that like some sort of punishment or what? <laughs> no. I, we did, we went, we changed schools a lot for some crazy reason. So uh, we went to public schools primarily, but my dad did a movie in the Philippines, and both my mother and he did this long project. They were there for like four months, five months or something. So they put us in Ridgewood Military Academy in the San Fernando Valley, and we boarded there. We, we boarded, and uh, it was a very interesting experience. And I, I, I kind of enjoyed it. Well, it that makes sense if your parents are out of country. Yeah, and we would call friends and say, hey, can we spend the weekend with you guys <clears throat> this weekend? And, um, it was very interesting, I have to say. I think I was kind of um, attracted to wearing a uniform there <laughs> for a, a minute, you know. But well, we were there for, we, we were in young kids and then went back and did like a first, like seventh grade and in, in like a junior high. I mean, it was, so we, we really moved around a lot, but mm -hmm. you know, mainly we did public schools in the San Fernando Valley. Well, that's great. So getting back, <clears throat> how did the music side, you were around creativity and playing guitar? Right. It was, we had, uh, like I said, uh, really close family friends. Uncle Rami Idris was a, a professional guy, a professional musician, played bass and, and uh, guitars. And he, he co-wrote the Woody Woodpecker theme. <laughs> and... Uh, and he would play parties, you know, and they, there would be sing-alongs and stuff. So I grew up in that kind of an environment. And as luck would have it, you know, when I became aware of rock and roll at, at a pretty early age, some um, older friends of uh, ours, teenager guys, turned us on to Little Richard and Eddie Cochran and I, it just really spoke to me, and it was a little, especially Little Richard was a little. It was a, a little dangerous. It was <laughs> like something because my dad uh, sang in uh, on the, in theater, so mm -hmm. it was legit. It wasn't like you know, uh, it was like show tunes. Right. And so he he eventually. I mean, he did a lot of great stuff. He worked with Lucille Ball and that uh, production of Wildcat in the 60s, 61, yeah. you know, hey, look me over, lend me. So I just was kind of ready. And then I heard rock and roll. And then I'll tell you what it was. It was in 1958. I was 10 years old. And I heard Rumble by Link Ray. And I get chills still. It, the, it was... It was menacing, the sound of that guitar. It, of course, as you recall, it was a, an instrumental, but it just had a vibe. And the interesting thing was that it was so simple. I mean, the, 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 the actual guitar part was brilliant, but very, very simple. So we actually could play the thing and that da 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 da
we got it. So my brother and I started to play this stuff and it just went from there. And we, by the time we were maybe eight or nine, we had uh, uh, some acoustic guitars. And then by the time we were, yeah, there you go. You know what's cool about this is <clears throat> every one of us in this room had that one song that went, oh my God. For me, it was Johnny Cash yeah, as yeah, a child. Yeah. <laughs> this song was banned. <laughs> it, it was banned? It was banned because of the title. Because Rumble, Rumble was yeah. about fighting, was a big yeah. fighting, you know. So that <clears throat> spoke to me. And that was, of course, well before uh, the British invasion, the Beatles and all that. But when that kicked in, it, I was done. And, and we were, uh, we started playing uh, in uh, my high school band, playing uh, instrumentals and uh, Twist and Shout and, and uh, early Isley Brothers stuff. And, and then when the Beatles kicked in, it just, took us to another level and I thought okay this is this I, I'm gonna wind up doing doing this and an early incarnation of spirit got started called that we called ourselves the red roosters and then, <laughs> uh, they would just went from there but uh, uh, Randy uh, California whose real, real name was Randy Wolf his uncle owned the ash grove uh, like a Oh yeah, Alvin. very famous. Yeah, Dave Alvin talks about that. <clears throat> yeah, it's like uh, there was the Troubadour and there was the Ash Grove. The Ash Grove was a little more traditional, less uh, Hollywood. Even though they were both in Hollywood, uh, uh, the Ash Grove was on Melrose at the time. It wound up being uh, at the later, later, later on uh, Santa Monica Pier for a while. It was. But anyway, we just got exposed to a lot of amazing uh, Lightning Hopkins, and I mean, Randy was a prodigy at that point, and he was just getting mentored by these legendary greats, and he was he he really Jay and I knew we wanted to uh, work with Randy, uh, Jay Ferguson, my partner, and JoJo Gunn and Spirit. Uh, had, had a brother who's no longer with us. And Tom Ferguson came, he had a, went to a folk, he played fiddle and stuff, and he came, went to a folk camp. And he came home from that experience and said, you guys, you gotta check out this kid. He's young, uh, but he's something else. And because of Tom seeing Randy, and going, man, this guy's really amazing. Jay and I did, connected with Randy, we put together, and, and uh, Ed Cassidy wound up, was dating Randy's mom, who was in the, and Ed had been with the Rising Suns, with Taj Mahal, and Ry Cooter, and a couple of other great guys, Gary Marker, and Jesse Lee Kincaid, and they booted him out. <laughs> so he was kind of, uh, he was a beatnik, he was older than us, he was in his 40s when we were young kids. So it just started like that and we wound up playing, it was a folk rock band, right? Uh, and uh, and was that Spirit at the time? This is like the Red, oh, the Roosters, Red Roosters that wind, wound up, it evolved into, the, the, we called it the Spirits Rebellious from the Khalil Gibran book. Then Cass got a gig with a big band in New York, so the whole family moved to New York. Randy is jamming on a guitar in Manny's music, and a guy named Jimmy James comes up and says, oh, man, I'd, I'd like you to play with me in my band. And they were playing at the Cafe Wa in the village. Randy's underage, but really great. And Jimmy James tr disappeared and uh, went to England and became Jimi Hendrix. 
and Jimmy. It's quite a pedigree. <laughs> yeah, check this out. And 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 there were two Randys in the band. One got one Randy was from Texas, and Randy Wolf was from California. So Jimmy said, "Oh, well, you're going to be Randy California." And that's <laughs> that's how Randy got his stage name. Isn't that wild? It is wild. So they come back from New York, and. Jay and I put a thing together with my brother and a, a guy named D D Denny Bruce was the drummer who wound up managing Leo Kotke later in, in life. And um, we tried to get some stuff going on and Jack Nietzsche we, uh, heard us in a rehearsal studio and he had just produced River Deep Mountain High and we, we just these little kids and he was a thought we sounded pretty good in the rehearsal place right in Hollywood. And he played on his stereo a, a test pressing of that song. And it was like, oh, man, this is Jackie DeShannon was there. OK. He takes us into the studio, and we did, it, we were too nervous. You know, we, we How old were you, Mark? 16, say 16, 17. Still in high school. That's very, that would have been intimidating for anyone. It's pretty amazing. So, um, and we sort of disbanded. And, and during that per period of time, our friend uh, Barry Hansen, who wound up being Dr. Demento, <laughs> <clears throat> who still is, I, I'm sure, um, wound up through his uh, uh, association with uh, Frank Cook and the guys in Can Can't Heat, Can't Heat Blues Band, I was in Can't Heat for uh, about a year, at, you know, while Cass and Randy were still in uh, New York. And when they came back, and uh, Can't Heat got signed to Mercury Records, I think, and I, I heard that Randy and Cassidy we're back in town, so I talked with Jay, and we decided that we were going to put a band together with those guys, with, with, with Randy primarily. We didn't think it would involve cast per se, but we were really wanted Randy. So I backed out of the uh, Can't Heat thing, and um, we put the Spirits Rebellious together, but Randy only would work with Cass and the uh, it was a jazz thing. It was a it was a, a key, the keyboardist John Locke, Ed Cassidy, and, and, a, and a great upright bassist. I forget his name. Excuse me, and Randy and they were doing stand, blue, uh, jazz standards and stuff. And we said we want to do a rock band with you though. And he said I, I I'd like to work with you guys, but I, Cass and John. I, I, I will only work with you guys if those guys are included. And we said, okay. But that took it out of the realm of, of just a rock thing that I was kind of lobbying for. And we wound up with this jazz rock thing that just because of who we were as musicians, that's just the way it turned out. And we played uh, folk and standards and then all of a sudden Jay and Randy started to write and it became spirit so that's kind of a and who named who named the band well we did I mean uh, I think Cass came up with the spirits rebellious uh, name oh, from Khalil from, from Khalil yeah and then I think at some point we thought well we maybe just shorten it so we just decided to name it Spirit. Well, I'm glad Randy wasn't from New Hampshire. He'd have been named Randy New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so getting back, why the bass? That, that's interesting. I had, had in one of my uh, high school bands, I was playing rhythm guitar. My brother was the lead player, and how that happened was when we were learning how to play, I was able to figure out I could, I'm a, like, uh, we're less than a year apart, but I, I was strong enough in my left hand that I could actually make a bar chord. <laughs> and Matt really couldn't get that together, so we would learn instrumentals, and he would 
we sort out the melody and he would play the melody uh, uh, you know single note stuff pretty much and I would play the rhythm parts because I could play the bar chords and we had a pretty happening little local band and at one point the bass player who was a pretty accomplished guy got a gig uh, a good pay play paying gig and uh, left and I, it was just one of those classic things where you know I we needed a bass player so I took filled in and just fell in love with the instrument and we went from there I've always been interested in, <clears throat> I'm on an airplane and somebody says hey what do you do oh I'm in the dental business because <clears throat> it's real hard to explain to people what the genres that I play which is roots rock Americana so I'm sitting next to you on an airplane. Hey, man, I'm Rick. What do you do, Mark? What do you say? I'm a musician. I mean, that's pretty much... Where do you start? So you play with anybody I know? I'm just curious. Well, oh, yeah, what, if, if, that, how, how conversation would go, and, and what do you lead in with? I mean, because it's so hard when I talk about... I've been in the dental industry 34, 35 years, and I'll tell you just... 50 people know that I'm in music because it's just it's so personal and it's so plus they wouldn't get it anyway right they wouldn't and I'm not trying to be you know cocky about it or I forget the name of that movie where that one actor owns a record store and they're real uh, you know no you don't get it you know we're the ones who know music hmm. but so where do you where do you go with that what do you lead in with well, basically, I'm a musician, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I guess I, and I don't really. Obviously, I'm a rock guy, and and I'm an old rock guy now. But, <clears throat> uh, and if they ask, well, what, what, would would you, would I've heard of you? And I said, well, I would say. Possibly, it depends on your taste in music, and uh, do you. Have you heard, ever heard of Spirit or Jojo Gunn or Firefall or Heart or Dan Fogelberg <laughs> or Stevie Nicks or Joe Walsh? You know, I don't run the list down, but if there's interest and in, in, okay, what, who, 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 and then if, if there's some recognition there, some people are just not interested in pursuing the conversation which is fine by me i i don't really need to right i mean i think the question I, I just i was always curious i mean how does you know you don't seem like a guy that would lead in with i'm a rock star you know <clears throat> well i i i have been lucky enough to be a rock star for a period of time but but i'm a musician and that, that's kind of a a, a, a level of success that you only experience. Um, some people are, are lucky, or I guess, to have a whole career at that high level. But, you know, the heart era when we were making, you know, number one records of these dreams and things like that, 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 that was officially me in my rock star mode you know I, I can legitly say yep I've done that but that's like a something you experience and then it's it it, it it didn't exist before that and then it goes away so I'm I ha I've had it and uh but I, I don't I'm not attached to right the, to the well I think it it's, makes it who you are today we are or you are tuned in to the Lone Star Jukebox. Mark Andy's here. He's got quite the pedigree. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with you. Thanks for being here, Mark. Oh, my pleasure, Rick. <laughs> 